Hi everyone, I hope you all are doing good and having a wonderful day. So I have recently discovered a very interesting vulnerability in one of my recent pen tests that I have did where I was able to abuse the JWT configuration in such a way that is very unique and I have not seen many people use this particular method. But still it is very interesting, the impact is tremendous and the way we are going to use it is actually very simple. Yet, I have never ever seen anyone generally talking about this. So in this video, we're going to talk about this particular vulnerability. We're going to see through a practical demonstration that how we can look for this vulnerability in our pen test or maybe in your bug bounties. But as always, before diving deep into this video, if you haven't checked out my previous video in which I have talked about how we can find some interesting vulnerabilities through response manipulation, then go ahead and check it out. The link of the video is given in the description as well as you can see it at the right side of the screen. And now, with that being said, let us get started. Now, before diving deep into this video, let us try to first understand that what exactly happened in my case scenario and what exactly we are going to do over here. Okay. So generally, whenever we are doing pen testing or, you know, mostly in bug bounties, we are given a wildcard scope target, right? Over here, for example, it is asterisk.target.com, which basically means that all of the subdomains of target.com is in scope, right? Now, let us say that we did the initial subdomain enumeration and all those things. And then we came across these two interesting subdomains. Or let's say these are the only two subdomains that we were able to find. Admin.target.com and Community.target.com. So upon analyzing Admin.target.com, you came to notice this interesting thing. That on this particular application, we are not allowed to register ourselves. Okay. And then upon doing some more further, you know, let's say JavaScript enumeration and JavaScript reconnaissance, you came to know that there are a few API requests which is getting handled inside this, you know, admin.target.com once you are logged in through this particular host, which is api-admin.target.com. But since public registration is disabled, you won't be able to access this target because obviously this will require you to, you know, have your proper uh, JWT token inside the authorization header, right? Now, leaving this aside, let's say we've got another target, which was community.target.com. And over here, what we saw is that this application is allowing any user to register themselves onto their platform. They can register an account, they can log in into that account, and they can just interact with the community members. You know, registration is enabled and all of the API requests is getting handled by this particular API endpoint, which is api-community.target.com. Okay, so far this seems very normal because in many, you know, real world scenarios and even in my scenario, I was, I was encountered with this very same thing. Okay, so what can actually go wrong in this case? Well, if this particular target, which is target.com is using the same secret key for, you know, handling the JWT token on API dash community.com as well as api dash admin dot uh, dot target dot com it can be a really big issue because what an attack can do from here is that they can obtain a jwt token from here and can possibly use it on this particular platform and this is something very very sensitive right because then we'll have access to api dash admin dot target dot com whereas we are supposed to use that jwt token only or it should be only valid for api dash community right so this is exactly what i have encountered in my recent pen test and trust me it was mind blowing because to be honest in the beginning i was having really a hard time understanding that why this might be happening but then again when we spoke with the with the client and everything we came to know that there are two important things that led to this interesting issue the first one is the JWT secret is the same for every target or every subdomain that they're using. And the second one is also interesting because they were not validating which JWT token is can be used for which target. For example, the API, the JWT token obtained for API dash community should be only valid for this target, right? Not for the other one. So these are the two issues that led to this interesting vulnerability and let's try to go ahead and see a practical demonstration to understand that how actually we can find and you know look for this vulnerability on real world example and then we'll see how we can fix this issue or what is the root cause of this issue through a source code so let's dive straight into the practical demonstration now over here i have created this very small lab to actually show you the demonstration of this interesting misconfiguration or the vulnerability 
okay so assume that we have these two different targets so actually i have deployed the you know web application on the same asset or the same server but let's say that these are two separate server and two separate targets so as you can see this is the you know users application or you can say this is the community application and over here we have the admin application right so as you can see in admin we don't have the registration functionality enabled so obviously we won't be able to you know login into this application unless we have a valid credential but over here if you take a closer look in this scenario we have the option to register ourselves on this application right so let's go ahead and qu quickly register ourselves over here so i'm just going to use a random email uh, let's say test at the rate be practical dot tech okay and again i'm going to set the password as test and let's click on register and I think the registration has been completed. Let's go to login and let's try to again log into our account back be practical.tech and the password is test. Sweet. And as you can see, we have successfully logged in into our user portal, right? And just for the demonstration, this is the dashboard. Okay. And now let's go ahead and try to understand what exactly has happened in the backend. So I'm just going to remove this from here click on login and this time we are going to intercept the request through perp suit so let's quickly provide our credential test at the red gmail.com sorry test at the red be practical dot tech be practical dot tech and the password is test let's click on login the request has been intercepted let's try to intercept the response as well and you can see it is saying message success and this is the JWT token that we have obtained, right? I'm just going to copy this in case we need to use it further and let's try to forward this now. And obviously we are logged into the application, right? We are logged into the dashboard and there is no issues at all, right? Similarly, let's try to go ahead and see how the application is behaving on the admin side. So I'm going to just use a random credential, for example, test at the rate, uh, you know gmail.com and this test okay let's try to turn on the intercept and let's click on login and again let's try to intercept the response over here let's forward this and you can see it says message invalid credential right so everything seems to work fine but remember what i told you that if the application is using the same secret key and not properly validating the origin of JWT token or where it was supposed to be used, this can be a critical issue, right? So what I'm simply going to do is that I'm simply going to turn on the intercept. Let's click on login and then I'm going to intercept the response. Okay. And then I'm going to replace this value with the JWT token that we have obtained. I'm just going to paste it like this. And then we can simply forward the request and you can see there's this new request getting sent to dashboard. Let's try to turn off the intercept and let's see what happens. And as you can see, we have successfully logged into this application. And if you take a closer look, the application was unable to determine our role. Why is that? Because this was never the user who is supposed to access this admin dashboard in the first place. If we take a closer look, this was the user who is supposed to access it. So just for this example, let me show you what will happen if we use the valid uh, admin credentials. So if we try to log in with admin and admin like this. So this is the actual credential. This is how the actual admin was supposed to access this. So you see what happens. We are signed with a JWT token. Let's go here and you can see the application was able to determine the user and the role is even given as admin, right? what the main issue here is that this application as well as the first application is using the shared secret key as well as there is no restriction or no you know uh, implementation on whether to detect whether the jwt token is you know intended for this particular host or not and this is the reason why this issue is happening and trust me this is something which seems a bit silly, but this is something that I've actually found on real application. So this is definitely worth a try, right? And now let's try to go ahead and try to understand through the source code that why exactly this might be happening and what can be the possible fix of this. Okay, so let's quickly dive deep into it. Now to actually understand that why this issue is happening, let's try to understand the code that I've written over. Okay, so you can see we have two applications over here, the admin application as well as the user application. 
if you try to read what exactly is present inside the admin app as well as the user app, it will be very interesting. So if you take a closer look, you see that we are including the JWT secret from this config file, right? Which is the config.js. If anyone who knows how to, you know, develop an application, even a little bit will be able to understand that what exactly is happening over here. Right. And this is the reason why I always recommend people for those who are into bug bounty and want really wanted to dive deep into, you know, how we can find interesting vulnerabilities that always at least learn the basics of web development, how, you know, request and responses are working, what is sessions and all those things. Right. So again, if you really want to know how you can start your journey as a bug bounty hunter in 2025, then go ahead and check out this video of mine in which I have talked about a complete roadmap where you'll be able to, you know, get a step-by-step -step approach of how you can get started into this, right? But that being aside, you can see that the JWT secret is getting loaded from here. And if you go and try to understand the user's app, we can also confirm that the JWT token is again getting included from the config.js file, right? And finally, if we try to read the data present inside the config.js, you can see that this is the secret, which is super secret shared key. Now this key is getting shared across two application. And this is one of the main important issue why this vulnerability is existing in the first place. Right now, here's a small question. Like, you know, since the internet is so big, there can be possibilities of, you know, many application using the same secret key. Right. For example, maybe this super secret shared key is using getting used in thousands of other, you know, web application across the Internet. So how can we fix that? Right. Because that again, you know, like with just JWT secret, it's it's not going to be, you know, completely fixable or completely remediated, you know, because if somehow if we didn't analyze or get to know the origin of the JWT token or where it is supposed to be used, it's not worth it at all, right? And this is the reason why the second and the most important remediation technique that you should use while, you know, creating a secure application is using this particular key, key and pair value in your JWT token, which is known as issuer and audience. Okay. Mainly issuer will say that this JWT token is issued by this particular host. So for example, Let's say that if we add this particular issuer value uh, variable into our JWT token and say that, you know, this JWT token is assigned by abc.target.com, then that particular token is only going to be valid for abc.target.com, right? The another variable is known as audience. So what is the audience or which are the audience that are going to consume this JWT token? Again, we put the same value such as audience is set to, you know, users.target.com, users.abc.com and something like that. Then it will simply tell the application that this is the target audience and this is where the JWT token is supposed to be used, right? So this is the main technique of how you can fix this issue. If you, if your JWT token is missing these things and if along with that, if you're using a same shared secret key across all your subdomains, then, you know, you are basically done. So this is how you need to actually secure your application. And this is how as a bug bounty hunter, we can look for this particular vulnerability. I hope you all have understood this. If you have any doubts, if you have any issues, feel free to let me know your doubts or issues in the comment section. Also do join our telegram channel. If you want to stay updated with the latest trends and technologies going under cyber security, web development, ethical hacking and bug bounty hunting. And now with that being said, keep learning, keep hacking and thank you so much for watching this video.